Welcome back to Garage Time. Today, the work on the 356 is gonna continue. Working on the transmission, this time we're going to install the fourth gear dog teeth and new synchros for all four gears. Hopefully, get it assembled pretty soon. And if you haven't already noticed, the new Garage Time shirts are here. I think the design's super cool. It really incorporates everything I do here. It's my little garage with the cars kind of bulging out each side. The front is Mac, the 911 poking out the front. And in the back, it's the 356. It's kind of the same view as this. And it's pretty much what I'm, I'm dealing with here. It's, uh, it's a two car garage, but I got so many tools. I'm just kind of like bulging at the seams. And so that's kind of what this reminds me of. And then I live in Huntington Beach, so there's palm trees. There's all garage time written in really big fun uh, letters. So. Thanks again, Corey. Man, I really think this is a, a cool design. This one's here to stay. And you can get it from renin.io. That's Corey's website. So we'll put a link in the description below. Please support uh, Corey and myself. Pick up a shirt, you, uh, you won't regret it. This is the gear cluster or the pinion shaft for the 741 transmission. Last time we cleaned this thing up and we replaced this, this bearing on the end. This is the pinion bearing, the roller one there. And we also uh, inspected things and determined some things were worn, like the synchros and all, all the synchros and the dog teeth on number four. So we got some replacement goodies here. These are the new synchros and they're a little different than the Porsche ones. These are made in the United States, a uh, place in Colorado. They were recommended to me from uh, Tom at CarQuip. He has used quite a few of them and said that they're good. So I trust his opinion and I went with these. The price was right. I also got the, uh, the dog teeth from the same company, also through Tom at CarQuip. So uh, let's get this taken apart and see if we can get this installed. Take a look, I got new bearings for... I have this micrometer for near style micrometer and I'm just checking this is a three inch standard so just making sure that I, I'm calibrated here that's reading zero this has a big split in it and I imagine you're going to get a different result depending on where you measure but this is the one synchro that didn't look like it needed to be replaced this one doesn't have any shiny spots on it so I suspect this one is within spec and that's it right there 3.0148 I'm gonna measure it again in a different spot, kind of near where that break is, just to see how much variability there is. That's 3.010. Let's try to do this in like four places, but, and then another seven. Four. Eight, five, eight millimeters. I like this little spec book. It's small, it's like smaller than my hand, but it has so much of the critical information you need. So right here, is the page I'm looking at. And for the 741, which is what I have, it's saying installed 76.3 to 76.7 millimeters. And so I'm, I'm right in the middle of the spec. No matter where I measure, it's like right in the middle. So 76.5 is the nominal. And I'm getting 76.58, 76.45, 76.52. I'm going to, because these are of a different style or a different coating, I think I'm gonna put all four new synchros in and I need to remove the synchro anyways to get the dog teeth out. This is the only one that showed pretty significant wear on the dog teeth. These are pretty big snap ring pliers, the uh, nine inch length. And I think it's the Icon brand. I think it's Harbor Freight. I've had these for a little while. I just put the cover on the car in case a ring starts to fly away. I don't want it to scratch the paint. Also wearing my glasses. Let's see if we can get this off. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. Whoa. So I'm trying to just pry this over. I got a big gap over here, but I want the gap to be on this side. I 
I was planning on getting this side off, but it's working out this way. And there we go. So just kind of rotating it. Just like that. There's a little bit of residual oil in here, which is fine. It was all held down with the ring. This is what the ring looks like. Undamaged, just a little bit uh, with oil on it. So I just want to document how this comes apart. There's these two blocks here and then two kind of spring bands on either side. So we should be able to just pull this up. So this came off this way. This guy was here, that's the ring, and then this guy was here. Okay, this band has a little bit of a shiny spot on there. And then this side also shows that same little wear mark there. Actually, there's two sides to that wear mark. But these are not typically a replaced item. Now, to remove the dog teeth, this is a difficult process because this is pressed on to the actual fourth gear. Fourth gear is machined separately, and then these two pieces get pressed together. And then you can see how it's got, this is the new one, but the, the, it has these splines on it. That's what carries the torque. So of course I had to make a tool to be able to push these things apart. That means heading back to the workshop to use the lathe again. I've made all my own tooling up to this point. For me, it's kind of part of the fun. This is a push tool and it's designed to fit inside. It has a shoulder on it, but the inner diameter there, the smaller diameter goes inside the gear to keep it centered. And then this shoulder is what pushes on the actual gear, but it's small enough to pass through the synchro. So this will pass through. So that's one side. And then this is what you push down against. And I made this out of aluminum because there's so much surface area on the outside of this. And I could have used a generic plate or whatever, but I wanted to get the force concentrated real close to the teeth on fourth. So I made this special diameter. This falls down inside there. So now we should be able to push the gear just straight down through there. and no damage to either part. It did take a pretty good amount of force, but not, not bad. It came off, I think, really well. So I'm gonna ultrasonically clean this again, brush it real quick, make sure there's no gunk in these positions because the new one has to slide right on where the old one was. Gear is very clean basically not getting anything off the towel when I wipe it. I actually cleaned the, the old one. So I'm just gonna take an inside measurement and make sure that these parts are the same size and get an idea of the difference so I know how much force is gonna be needed to push it on. And then I'm also probably gonna heat up the new one so it's a little bit larger in diameter. That'll help it fit over. 
for this, I'm just gonna use these inside gauges because the number isn't as important as just the overall size or the difference in size. This one is quite a bit smaller, at least on the inside of the teeth, but it looks like the press fit is between the teeth. Because if you look at the wear marks, there's no contact on the side that I just measured. The contact is in between the teeth. 1.9370. And this one's 1 1.935. So this ring, the way I measure it, is about two thousandths of an inch smaller in diameter than this one. So this is gonna need to be enlarged in order to fit it over. But it's the right part, it's just gonna be a challenge to get it on. Okay, to push this back together, I'm gonna to use the same tool. The only exception is I'm gonna put some plates in the bottom of it. That's gonna lift the gear up just slightly. So when it's time to put this on, it's, it's a difficult press fit because there's no lead in at all on these teeth. It's really difficult to line it up and you don't want it to press down like cockeyed. So what this is gonna do, I'm only gonna press one metal thickness at a time. These are probably 40 thousandths thick. So if it goes crooked and it, when it starts, it, it can't get too far off because it, it'll run into its own fixture. So I'm hoping that I can press it down just to get it started and then I'll pull the whole assembly out like so. It'll be together at that point. I will pull it out, I'll add a spacer, do it again, add a spacer, do it again. And I'm also going to heat it up. Now heating it up is okay, but generally what happens is the heat is lost pretty quickly by the time you monkey around with all the shims and stuff. So I'm gonna try kind of both methods and hopefully this will be sort of a fail safe approach to keep it from going in crooked. I think we can pretty safely go up to about 300, 250, 300. Fully pressed in now, so I'm just holding it up to the light. I didn't put too much pressure on it. Basically just enough pressure so that there's no daylight between the gear and the dog teeth. And so I'm, I'm looking and there's no, no daylight. Sometimes you can see just a tiny little bit where the top of the gear is, but generally it's pushed all the way down. So that part is good. And I don't see any kind of cracks or anything in the dog teeth. I mean, it did kind of go down a little weird, but because I had that block to kind of keep it straight, I was able to, to gauge the thickness. And I just kind of kept rotating it around to push it as best I could. There is a little bit of metal transfer. Like if you see real close, if you look real carefully, there's like a tiny little bit of metal uh, shavings, probably that two thousandths. 
is here's one little piece right there. Put this right back the way it was. These Z's were pointing up. So I'm gonna put this like this, this like this. This one was on this side. This one had the two wear marks on this side. Yeah, it looks like they do have a direction. So there is a mark on the top of this one. It has a little rib right there. This one also has a rib. And that was what was pointing up. Yeah, I also confirmed on the third gear that this band or this little rib here does point up. So the new synchro is gonna go just like this. And I've also confirmed that it, it feels the same. It fits inside the dog teeth exactly the same this one does. So there's a bevel on this and there's a bevel on the actual um, teeth. And that bevel seems to be perfectly matched up with the new dog teeth and the new synchro ring. So everything fits like it should. Snap it back together. Be done with four I think I am going to use a zip tie just so this doesn't go too far if it flies loose. Can't go too far. It's real light pressure with that. Almost there. And that's on. So that's fourth gear done. And this feels really nice. So now that it's installed, I can repeat that measurement for the diameter, make sure it's in spec. So that's touching 3.012 is 76.45, which is right in the middle. 76.5 is the middle of the range. So this is just under the middle of the range. So I think it's gonna work fine. Let's try the slider and see how it snaps on. That just clips into gear. That's the feeling you get on the gear shifter when it just clicks in. So if I line, if I, if I put the teeth to teeth, when I push, it should turn itself in. It just turned to the right, that's perfect. So I think we're in good shape here. here I'm just comparing, I'm um, getting ready to do third gear. I'm just comparing the feel of the third gear and fourth gear. This is the new parts. This is the old parts. And the friction feels pretty similar. Maybe a little more friction with the new one, but this probably has a little bit of residual oil in it too. Teeth are still pretty sharp. There's a little bit of roundness to them, but I don't think it's worth the effort of replacing it. So as this is spinning up the speed of the gear, that helps it grab onto the inside part of the dog teeth and the outside part. Both are at play here. The inside surface is very important too. That's why you can look on the inside of this, there's little, little oil groove rings in there. And you can see a little bit of wear on top of the groove. In fact, there's a little bit of galling on this one, but there's just a tiny bit of wear on these grooves. The new ring only has three grooves for oil, but they're a little bit deeper. So just a different design. That's why I'm replacing all four. So all four gears shift exactly the same. The snap ring's in good condition, no marks on the back side. It's not distorted or bent or anything. So it's ready to go back in. All right, now we're doing second gear. You can see the gears are getting bigger and they're getting narrower now. And that means getting the dog teeth off are even harder with first and second gear. The teeth on this one actually look really good, so I'm definitely not replacing these. But if I were, it would require some special tooling to get the dog teeth off. I'm going to measure the synchro diameter here. And I'm just taking the biggest ones now. This is third gear, 3.0118. 3.0118. 
So that's going to be within spec two. This one's a little smaller, 3.0085. This is the one, well, first and second both have these individual rollers. We don't want to lose any of those. And this one has a slightly different set of blocks. This block here is a little funny shaped and there's no Z on it. This one has the Z. The upper bands. Actually, there was only one, there's only one upper band. So I'll have to check the manual and see if that's right. Yeah, that's right. Only one uh, band on first gear. And if you look at the block, it has a blunt end on it. So that would mean it can't push against the band anyways. So that is how the manual shows it. That's correct. Okay, rib is pointing up. And we get this one reassembled. We'll try it without the zip tie this time. Okay, the numbers are in. Number four is 3.010, 3.0118 for number three. 3.0085 for number two, 3.0115 for number one. So those are all within the 76.5 millimeter range. So I'm gonna put first gear on for the final time. And this is the original roller bearings that were on first gear to begin with. Second gear was the one that was missing a roller. And I think someone just forgot to put it in but I didn't replace these rollers. They measure the exact same amount as the new rollers. And I did confirm the new rollers are within spec. And I actually measured second gear on the shaft and measured the axial uh, or the radial end play, and it was minimal. So it's within spec, the new bearings will work just fine. This is a little bit tedious. And then as long as there's pressure on that washer, these will not fall out. You can wiggle it, turn it upside down or whatever. But the minute you lift this up, those will fall out. So I gotta be very careful when everything's not assembled that we don't lift on first gear or they'll all fall out. I've done that and learned the hard way. All right, everybody is accounted for, all the soldiers or ducks in a row, whatever you want to call it. No missing bearings. So I'm not putting it together with missing bearings like someone else probably did. That is it. First gear is ready to go on. It goes this way. And it's on. You can barely feel a tiny bit of movement there. Like I said, it's less than a thousandth of an inch. That guy on there like so. So I have second gear in a separate bin. I didn't want to mix second and first gear rollers. So I'll go get that cup with all the rollers and we can start putting those in as well. You look at the wear marks on this and you can tell which way it goes. This goes this way. That's the way it came off. And then these are the old spares. This is Mark's spare. These are the new rollers. So we just need to assemble them just like we did on the other. So let the weight of the pinion kind of keep that all together. Slip this over. Make sure nothing fell out. And just want to keep downward pressure on that so that lower row of bearings, they can't get out as long as it's got weight on it. You want the dog teeth pointing down because this is the slider between one and two. Just make sure we don't lose any bearings. Yep, that's it. 
then there's a spacer between two and three, and that's this guy right here. Because the rollers are on this side, they take a little wider path. So you can see it's a little wider. I'm pretty sure it was done this way before. So we'll put that back the way it was. This is third gear. This, car this cage on this roller bearing has a thinner path, and that's what's on that washer. So this is this way. And then this inner race, it's very clean, but the inner race uh, doesn't really have any indication whether it goes up or down. I believe because this is smooth all around that this probably goes down because this is allowed to rotate and up here it's not. So I'm gonna put that this way. And then the fourth gear rollers will be on that one, I think. Turns out uh, Tom sent me an extra needle because these are not, no longer available new. But the needle that was sent doesn't match up with this one. And I thought he might have sent the wrong needle, but he did send the right needle. It's just that this bearing is not the correct bearing for this transmission. Fourth gear normally has a different cage. And even though this one's the right height, the rollers are different lengths. So this is not a Porsche bearing. I couldn't use the replacement roller he sent. So now I'm looking for a complete fourth gear roller bearing. And like I said, they're not available new. So I think I got some good bearings, used bearings coming from a few different sources. So I'll pick the best one. So I don't think this is a very tight fit, but I'm gonna see real quick. I could put that in the press too. I just gotta get the right tool to fit over it. Okay, that bearing race is a medium fit, press fit. So that's gonna keep this whole stack from coming apart. So I can turn it upside down now without those individual needles falling out. So we can see this bearing is nice. You know, all the gears are just spinning on their roller bearings, you know, really nice. There's clearance between, um, let's see, clearance between second and third, which is great. That's what that washer's for. You don't want these gears to collide. And I'm just gonna double check the, um, you know, the slider, make sure that we can engage different gears. So this would be first gear, just like that. That's second gear. So it's clipping just like it should. That's neutral. So once again, second gear, first gear, that would be third and then neutral and then up would be fourth. So this guy goes just like so. So the power comes in from the engine. This would be first gear, second, third, and fourth. So all I'm doing now is just looking that these gears are you know, in the right place and everything seems to mesh like it should. This doesn't need anything other than replacing that race. Okay, this is the intermediate plate. And I've looked at these bearings pretty carefully. I don't see any major wear or dull spots on the inner race. It's a little harder to inspect because the bearing doesn't come apart. But Brendan sent me new bearings from you know, Australia. And these are German bearings. So I feel like the best thing to do is just use the new bearings, uh, given that the pinion bearing was, was starting to wear. So I have the new bearings, I'm just gonna put them in. So to get these out, this is aluminum. So we can take advantage of the differential expansion between aluminum and steel, heat this up to pi 250, and then we'll push these bearings out. I just came from my barbecue, I was heating this up, and these bearings, when I flipped it over, just fell right out. Don't even need the press. I had my press set up, but this came right out. I've let everything come back down to room temperature and I'm gonna measure the old bearings versus the new bearings. Basically, it's this inner race. I need to know the height and compare it to the new ones because the height does affect the positioning of the whole gear set. 
So I want it to be as close as possible to the originals. If not, I can make adjustments with the gasket to set the correct pinion depth. Uh, it doesn't matter so much on the main shaft, but let's take a measurement on the old and the new. So 87425, I'll write that down, 0.87425. I'm just gonna measure it one more time at a different location, make sure it's consistent. Point eight seven two seven five. So like we found before, this is a little different. So that's a, about a thousandth of an inch narrower, which isn't significant, but once again, I'd like to know what that is. So it is gonna move the, the whole pinion shaft, it's gonna move it a thousandth of an inch. Not the end of the world, but like I said, we're just documenting as much as we can. And then going back to this bearing, I'll measure the outer on this one. Okay, this is back from the ultrasonic cleaner. I just have it here in the corner of my garage. It's looking a lot better. I did leave the remnants of the gasket on here because that's the original gasket thickness that controls, like I said, that pinion depth. So I'm trying not to disturb that, but everything's really clean, including all the cavities in there. Um, there is some evidence of, like this bore here is, is perfect. This bore here does have some scratches in it. Like, it looks like the, at one point the bearing did rotate. Um, it doesn't look really bad. So I'm going to push the bearing in and feel how tight it is. If I feel like it's too loose, then I'll have to replace the intermediate plate. I don't want to replace this, but it, like I said, it does show, you can't feel it with your fingernail, but it does show some evidence of probably a failed bear, bearing in the past, and, and that can change the diameter. And of course, you don't want the bearings to spin inside the bores. Assuming the bearing fit is okay in this, I also need to measure the depth of the counter bore and also the depth of this counter bore so we can preload these bearings. So this is a, uh, a depth micrometer. And so I'm just gonna stick it here and run it down the hole and measure the actual depth of both sides in a couple places. This is a little bigger on this side. 0.675, add 2.1. I'll take a picture of this, but I think this piece is no good. Um, I can't get a, a measurement on it because I can feel a ridge where it looks like a bearing has spun on this in the past. These dropped in pretty easy, but what I'm doing is I'm checking to see if I can turn them. And as this plate cools down, it gets harder and harder to turn the bearings. This one is now locked in place. This is probably, I still can't touch it for more than a second. It's probably 180, 150. And this guy, I can still turn it a little bit, but the more it cools down, the harder it is to turn. So I think the intermediate plate is okay it's got a nice fit between the bearing and the plate. Even at operating temperature, they, they feel pretty snug. And then the purpose of this plate is to come down on top of the bearings and clamp them even further so they don't rotate. The problem I can see though, is that this bearing has, I can see some clearance there, which is by design, there's a gasket as well, but it's clamping on this one, but on this one, I can push it down to where the plate is actually contacting the aluminum or it's pulling it this way, which means this bearing will get clamped, this one will not. This is back to room temperature and these are unmovable at this point. Uh, room temperature, they're locked in place. And I haven't done all the math yet on this, but what I'm after is just the, the 
clearance between the clamping plate and the intermediate plate. So I have these feeler gauges and what I'm, what I'm getting is, this is the five thousandths, goes in really easy. Six thousandths, a little bit of drag, goes in easy. And I'm just holding it on the upper bearing, it goes in easy over there. So now seven thousandths, goes in easy, little drag, and a lot of drag. So I have between six and seven thousandths of clearance between the, the retainer and the, the plate. But when I, when I come over here, I can still push the, 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 uh, the retaining plate down. So if I push this down, I'm getting a clearance. The five won't go in. This is, the th this is a two, won't, it won't go in. And this is a one and a half and it still won't go in. I mean, I might be able to get it here on the side. Yeah, so that's a two and a half. I can push that in on the side, but that's largely due to this bearing holding, up, holding this thing up on an angle. This method is a pretty good method too. It's probably as good as combining all three of the height measurements. This feeler gauge method is pretty accurate. Probably should just rely on this. Before I put the bearings in, I wanted to have some measurements in case I needed to fall back on them. Yeah, I'd say there's no preload on this one. So that just tells me that this retainer is bad. It's worn out. It's not gonna work in my transmission. So I'm gonna look to replace this with probably another used part. It's probably not available new. So that's a little bit of a stumbling block, but I'm still waiting on the fourth bearing needle as well. So when those parts come in, I should be able to put the whole thing together. I've got all the gaskets, all the seals, all the little lock tabs, plates, everything should be able to go back together. And I've been focusing on the car, getting it ready to drive. I have the fuel system, the fuel tank, the petcock valve rebuilt, all new lines all the way to the rear. I got the brakes installed, new lines on the brakes. I got all the things that go through the tunnel, including electrical, all that stuff is done. So it should be a matter of putting the trans together, putting it into the engine and just putting everything back in and trying it out, making sure that the car is at least drivable for a test drive. So uh, still lots to do, but once I get the parts, it should go together pretty quickly, fingers crossed. And don't forget <clears throat> support Renan and myself with the new Garage Time t-shirt. I've been wearing it everywhere. I think it's super cool. Lots of um, you know, good feedback on it so far. So please go to renin.io for the shirt and we'll see you next week. Cheers.